Hello, welcome to AP Public Health Week uh, Social Media 201 webinar. Today we are really going to be talking about all kinds of fun and interesting uh, ways that we can be really honing our uh, social media strategy for National Public Health Week. We're really excited for you to be here. We're pumped. Um, feel free to follow along live, of course, and you can ask lots of questions um, over on the link. Ask them, type them right in there, um, and we should be able to answer them live along the way, which would be great. Um, you can also, this will be recorded and posted on YouTube almost immediately after we're done talking today. Um, so if you've got colleagues, friends, folks you know who should be tuning in but they aren't able to for whatever reason live, they can check things out afterward. Cool. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. We're going to go through a few slides. We're going to go through a few examples. And we'll talk about how we can really start uh, hammering home the message that we want for National Public Health Week. So bear with me while I screen share with you. Present to everyone. Great. OK. It's a little bonkers right now. There we go. And slideshow, here it is. OK, so social media 201. You all know National Public Health Week is April 1st through 7th. We have all kinds of fun and exciting and interesting things going on at APHA. And we know you are also doing fun and exciting and interesting things. So here's how we're going to make the most of all of that. We're going to build interest and anticipation in our own events and then in the national events as well. And we're also going to be seen as a part of the National Public Health Week movement. So here is how we are going to do that. Strategy. So how we are going to make National Public Health Week shine in our communities. Step one is that we have to have a strategy and a calendar. Um, it's really helpful to think about this, and I know you already are because you're watching right now um, on March, March 13th or slightly thereafter for an event that's happening on um, April 1st through 7th. So I know you're thinking in advance, which is great. This is going to give you a lot of chance for success for your events. So what should we be doing right now? We should be sharing our events on calendars. Of course, you want to share on the National Public Health Week calendar. So if you go to nphw.org um, and you click on events, you will see that you can share your event on our calendar. You can also see all the other events that are going on in your community and across the country, which is great. Um, you also want to be sharing on calendars uh, where you live. So if you are at a state university, consider sharing on the university calendar, um, put out to um, folks listservs, make sure you're reaching out to um, all the places that you might want to be seen. Um, community newspaper calendars are great for this. Um, if you have neighborhood listservs, all those are great. Um, you should also think about reaching out to potential partners and attendees right now. So if there's a group you really want to make sure is involved, start talking to them right now to make sure that you have the best chance for their attendance and their support. So two weeks out, so we are on March 13th right now, so this would be like starting Monday of next week, so essentially right now but soon. Um, start posting on social media. Think about um, how you are gonna get people excited. So um, if you have RSVP forms, if you have images for the event, if you have even just uh, can't wait to see you on X day at X event um, with a picture or a GIF or anything like that, that's really gonna be helpful and make your uh, event visible. And then the week of National Public Health Week, I want you to start thinking about ways to engage with your audience. So how can people participate in your event, um, both online, in person? When we're thinking online, we want to be thinking about, is there a hashtag for your event? Are you going to use the NPHW hashtag? Um, are there places people can share their photos? Are there ways people can follow along at home? A lot of opportunities. Um, this is just stuff we should be thinking of for when National Public Health Week hits, how are we hitting the ground running? Um, again, you want to make sure you post to that National Public Health Week calendar. 
here you can see, this is from a few days ago, but we've got events all around the country. Um, so there are a few different ways that you can view this. Um, you can view it as the map, of course, and then if you scrolled further down the screen, you would see there's a chronological list of all the events that are happening. Um, and when you click on those little uh, spots on the map, the markers, you will see the event that, as it pops up. So this is going to make sure that everyone around the country knows that you are participating in National Public Health Week. Um, you can really get your event seen on a large, wide-scale level. Um, this is also going to give you a really easy link. So as you're doing that sharing and promotion starting Monday with your schedule, um, you can easily link to the National Public Health Week calendar post, which is really helpful. You can also um, put that in your emails to your potential partners. And it also lets us know at APHA that you are hosting your event. It's a really great way for us to see so we can share your event on the National Public Health Week um, Twitter account. That's at NPHW. It's also a great way for the nation's health staff. Um, you know the nation's health as APHA's newspaper, of course. Um, as they're looking for what are they going to cover for National Public Health Week. So if your event looks really exciting and interesting on the National Public Health Week calendar, there's a great chance, greater chance, certainly, um, that they might want to write about your event. So that's pretty cool. How are we going to make these events really shine? We are going to use images. Pictures worth a thousand words. You know that and so do I. So what are we going to do? We're going to use photos like this. It makes people feel like they're really engaged. It also gets people excited for the stuff that you're doing. So this is from uh, 2017, um, but it was to promote a 2018 event, which is great. And you can do that absolutely. Um, I highly recommend it because it makes people remember fondly and they say, oh, I want to be in that again. If you don't have photos of your own, that's no big deal. Um, we have plenty of images for you to use at mphw.org. So you can see here, I'm going to see if you can see my cursor. Um, we have the National Public Health Week logo, of course. We also have uh, shareables for each daily theme. So I'm kind of hovering over, this is the Monday one. Our theme on Monday is healthy communities. So you can see we've got a science and action and a health for every day. Um, we also have a blank shareable. This is great if you want to download at nphw.org. You can use this to download and customize for the things that you are working on. I think it's a really great way to um, really make the National Public Health Week message your own. Um, and if, if that doesn't work for you, you know, maybe just you just slap the National Public Health Week logo on there and call it a day, and that's okay too. So a lot of options that are available to you. How else are we going to work on this? We're going to use hashtags to make ourselves really visible. Um, using the NPHW hashtag on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook is going to make things that you post really easy to find. Um, it will also be promoted with other National Public Health Week participants so people can see and communicate and feel part of a community. Um, and it'll also make things really easy to find later if you want to reflect on what worked and what we could work on for next year. If you use hashtag APHA billion steps, you can share your progress as you are working. We've already passed. Yesterday we passed a billion steps. Very exciting. Are we going to get to two? I sure hope so. I think we can do it. So motivate and pump up your team and your community um, for them to get involved in the steps challenge. And don't forget that hashtag NPHW chat allows you to join the conversation with our Twitter chat. Um, and we're getting into that right now. So uh, how are we going to use a hashtag? Here's a really good example. Um, so we're gearing up for hashtag NPHW. Check out the full calendar of events and add your own at the link. Easy peasy. And you can see here's another example of that. You've got the billion steps hashtag and the NPHW hashtag uh, with an image. And this is an Instagram post, as you can tell. So how are we going to participate in the National Public Health Week chat, which, as you know, is at 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, April 3rd. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to RSVP. We're going to let 
everybody know that we are partaking in the conversation. This is very exciting. Um, this gets people pumped up. People can see who is participating, and they will see that you are an expert in the field of public health, and they'll, they'll be more willing to engage with you. Um, the next thing you can do is if you want to really plan in advance, you want to get those questions ahead of time. So you are going to email Megan Lowry at APHA. She's our communication specialist, and she will be happy to share those, those questions with you ahead of time. Then you can plan what your responses will be ahead of time so you can think about what is the voice we're going to use? What images what might we want to share? What links to our work do we want to include for this major audience? Because this is the biggest public health conversation of the year. So here's an example of how you participate in a Twitter chat, um, which you may know or you may not. So um, APHA will be posting our questions, and it'll say something like Q1, here's a question, hashtag NPHW chat. So here is an example of the nation's health participating in the chat, answering question one. You can see A1 at the beginning of the tweet, so we know where we are in that conversation. We can see, aha, of course they are answering question one, um, because questions come fast and furious, and so do answers. And then sometimes there are so many people talking, you might miss a question. So this will let you know, ah, OK, this is where we are. And then we make sure we include that hashtag NPHW chat so that as people are following along, they can see your response within the conversation. Easy peasy. Uh, you can see my MS Paint arrows really looking strong, I think, today. Um, the other really important thing about participating in a Twitter chat is making sure you are part of a community that you are following and following back. Who are some experts you should be following? Of course, APHA. Um, so APHA is at Public Health on Twitter. They are going to give you basically everything that's going on at APHA you're going to see on this account. Um, and you can also see there are like lots of experts um, folks that they follow, our sections, our affiliates, um, our member groups that are folks that you can be engaging with. Of course, we want you to follow National Public Health Week ourselves um, at NPHW. This is where we're gonna, you're going to be seeing lots and lots of promotion as the weeks are leading up to National Public Health Week. And then all of the highlights you'll see along the way. Um, and then the Nation's Health, of course, is going to be covering National Public Health Week. So you want to follow them for all your public health news. Here is the time for questions. I'm going to do one quick little thing here, though, because I want to make sure that you can see, oh my gosh, that's going bunkers. I want to make sure you can see where all the shareables are for National Public Health Week. So if you go to nphw.org, you can type in tools and tips slash shareables, certainly. Um, but the other place you can go is just hover over tools and tips, and you can click on shareables. And here is where you can download um, the, the images for your social media feed, uh, feeds. And you can see each one has a download. It's the right shape and size for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So you can see all of them here. I'm just going to give it a little scroll. Easy peasy. And you can see you can also get the logos. And then here we have banners. You can throw that on letterhead. You can throw that at the top or bottom of your web page. It's pretty simple. So. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There, there it is. OK, we're back. How do I choose a hashtag for our local events is a really good question. Um, so thanks for starting with that. How are we going to do that? Well, I think if you want to tie it into National Public Health Week, you should include NPHW for your, your location. So let's say we are doing a walk in Atlanta. I would consider something like hashtag NPHW walk ATL. So that tells people what's happening, why it's important, and where it's happening. Um, something along those lines, I think, is a really good way to do that. And that'll get people focused on like the very local aspect of your event. If you want to make it broader, you can just use NPHW. And I think people will find it pretty All right, I think we've got some more questions. I'll cover my events. Really good question. 
um, you should reach out certainly to local reporters and editors. It's really helpful if you can find a name for a person instead of just pitching to an event's email address. Um, if it's if you know who's covering health in your area, that's that might be who you might want to reach out to. Um, take a peek there, see what there is to see. Um, reach out if you don't hear from them. Follow up. Um, give them a little bit of time because reporters are usually pretty pressed for time. Um, but that is certainly one way to go about it. Make sure you include those five W's, the who, what, when, where, and why. Um, so people know, like the, these reporters know ahead of time, where is this going to be? Who is this involving? Why is this important? You really want to include all of those things. Um, the other thing you can do is you can tag them on Twitter. Um, so most reporters are on Twitter uh, and editors, uh, uh, journalists haven and uh, burden sometimes to be on Twitter, I would say. Um, but if you go ahead and at them, so use the at symbol and then their name on Twitter and you let them know about the event, make sure you include a link if you've got a link online. And even if it's just the calendar to the, your event on NPHW, I think that'll be very, very helpful. Um, and see if you can engage with them that way. There's nothing wrong with sliding into the DMs also, but it, you, they have to follow you and you have to follow them as well. Um, so that is a great way to engage with local press, but it's a good start. Uh, do you have to use a photo with every post? You don't, but it is sometimes helpful because uh, using a photo makes, first of all, it just makes your post bigger on your timeline. So like a little, little baby tweet, or like a big photo tweet, it just makes it more noticeable, certainly. But you don't have to. Um, you can just share your message whatever in whatever way works for you. Um, Twitter also does make it really easy if you're using Twitter to um, use their GIF button. It's a little box that says GIF. And if you use that, you can search uh, moving images that'll kind of set the mood for the post that you want to share. Um, on Instagram, you have to use a photo. Like that's just the nature of the platform. Uh, but on Facebook and Twitter, you sure don't. So, but that's a really good question. I see we've got more questions. Oh, where can I get ideas for NPHW events? I'd recommend checking out the calendar, honestly. So NPHW slash events. Um, and the calendar should pop up there. And you can just scroll and see what other people are doing. I know um, I'm gonna shout out Brookline, Massachusetts because they've been emailing me this week to tell me a little bit about their events. And they've got many of theirs posted already. And you can see they've got a wide variety of things. I know things that we see every year all the time, walks are really popular. Um, I think we see health fairs a lot. I think we see um, a lot of tabling, certainly at universities. Um, but there are other things you can do too. You can do like a town hall meeting. You could do a luncheon. You could do, um, if you know of an organization that brings in therapy dogs, uh, it's about test time uh, at universities and schools everywhere. Uh, probably some folks are stressed out and they could use a dog to pet and calm down a little bit. Um, those are always fun. Those are good pictures, too. Not, not that that's the whole reason you would do an event, but it is also fun. So, like, why not? Um, but there are a lot of opportunities, and I would strongly recommend you look at that calendar. Also, just think about your strengths. Like, what do you like to do? What are you good at? Check those things out um, and start promoting that. Like, there's no reason to try to do something that you're not comfortable with that's out, really outside your wheelhouse. Um, you can just play to your strengths. And I think that's a really strong idea. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. You will start planning your events if you haven't already and really just like take it up to the next level. Looks like we have another question. We don't have many followers on Twitter. How do I get my message out there? That's a good question. Um, so nobody starts with a gazillion followers unless you are a Kardashian. That's just sort of how it is, but that's okay. Um, the best way to gain followers is to follow people and interact with them. Um, don't be weird, but <laughs> follow folks, respond to their messages, um, talk on their, talk to them, tag them in your posts. Um, if you follow folks who are experts, and if you go to at Public Health or at Nation's Health, 
um, there are lists that you can just follow a whole list of um, either APHA member groups or public health experts, leaders in the field. Um, so you'll have a list of folks that you want to be interacting with anyway. And then once you do, make sure you're liking their posts, make sure you're commenting, um, add something to the conversation though. It shouldn't just be like, great, because that doesn't really say anything about you. So you want to make sure that they know that you are also an expert in the field. Um, or you can ask a question. You could like, you can also just own the fact if you are not an expert, I'm not an expert in a lot of things. Um, so sometimes I just ask questions. Um, like, where can I go for more information on this? Or is there a way to download this resource somewhere? Um, and that's a good way for folks to notice you and see that you are interested and passionate. And that's really, really important. All right, I think we got another question. Oh, how do you resize photos for Twitter? That's a good question. Um, sometimes Twitter will do that resizing for you. Um, that can be very helpful. Um, but if your photo is really, really, really big, um, there are a few things you can do. If you have a PC, I would just pop that puppy right into Paint, MS Paint, um, and you can uh, crop and resize that way. There's tools along the way. Oh my gosh, let me see if I can pull it up for you. And bear with me, because I don't know if it's on this computer. No, it is not on this computer right now, unfortunately. But if you go into Paint, there's like a crop and resize tool, and you can just go ahead and do that and save it as a smaller file. Um, if you have a PC and you maybe have a Photoshop, uh, that's easy peasy. You just go in um, and resize it. If you want it smaller, you make it a smaller uh, pixels. It'll help. Um, if you want to make it bigger, um, you can do that too. Easy peasy. All right. Looks like we have more questions. Let's see. In APHA's tools, is there an image that has the option to add local health department logo? Yes, there sure is. Let me see if I can pull that up for you and then screen share it with you. Yes, indeed, okay. I'm screen sharing again. Bear with me because we're gonna go wild for just a second. Present to everyone. There it is, okay, ooh, going fast. There, okay, so if you go ahead and scroll. So you can see on these shareables, there is space in between NPHW 2019 and the actual National Public Health Week logo where you can pop your logo right there. Um, and if you wanna use just the blank one, there's space at the top as well. So that is a fine place to go ahead and share your logo. Um, you can also, if you wanna take a look at the banners, that's a little, more iffy, unfortunately. Um, but you could, if you needed to, um, blur out the dates and you could pop your logo in white on the green or the blue. Okay. Hang on, let me get back to with you. Oh, stop, there we go. Here we are, okay. Photos with APHA, oh, that is a really good question. Um, this year, we are gathering photos from National Public Health Week via Instagram. So if you have an Instagram account, you and you just hashtag your post NPHW or hashtag APHA Billion Steps, um, and that will actually show up. We have a feed on the National Public Health Week site. Um, if you go to, oh my gosh, let me see if I can pull it up to make sure I'm telling you the correct thing. Yes, if you go to about, NPHW at the right side of the screen, and you're gonna hover over it, and photo highlights is the first thing. All of these very cool, very exciting um, Instagram posts that you all are already sharing are showing up in that feed, and they're gonna continue. Um, so that's a really good way to share your photos with APHA. If you don't have an Instagram account, and nobody in your office has an Instagram account, I'm sure somebody has an Instagram account, but if you don't, you can go ahead and email them to at nphw at apha.org, um, and we will do our best to make sure that we can share those with uh, our followers. Let's see. I think we don't have any other questions. We're gonna give you one last call. Hearing nothing. 
I'm going to let y'all go for the afternoon. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, as you know, this will be recorded. You'll be able to see it online uh, almost immediately, probably within an hour or two on YouTube. So you can feel free to share the link with folks who maybe weren't able to tune in today. You can also always reach out to us uh, on Twitter is a great way, at NPHW. Um, and you can also um, check out our website for all of these resources, et cetera. Um, we're really excited to see what you pull together for National Public Health Week. We're excited. We hope you participate in the Twitter chat. Of course, the forum has a webcast component. So please RSVP for that. That's on April 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, student Day is also going to be webcast. That's going to be on Thursday, April 4th at 6 p.m. Um, and that'll be a panel discussion. Uh, you're graduating, now what? Uh, um, we'll have other fun things along the way, some surprises. We're really pumped. We hope you are too. Um, let us know if you have any thoughts or questions, uh, but thanks so much for hanging out and we'll talk to you soon.